Hi, I'm Elke Valovirta, and this one is about tube amplifiers master volume, what it is and what it actually does and how to use it properly. I edit it a bit. But yeah, uh, it has come to my attention <laughs> that many people doesn't really, or there's a misunderstanding considering the master volume of a guitar amp. So I'm gonna show and explain that it's not just a volume control. That's just a small part of it. Master volume, what it is. As you probably know, if you don't know, now you know that a tube amplifier, like this PV5050 I'm using now, boosted with GS808, it has a preamp section and a power amp section. The preamp section is where you are the preamp tubes, you know, where you get the gain, you dial the lows, the mids, the highs, kind of the sound of the amp. Then after the preamp section, there's a phase inverter tube, and then after that, it goes to the power amp section, where are the, those big, you know, bulbs. In this case, quarter of six or sixes. The master volume, which on the 5150 is labeled post gain, it's after the preamp, before the power amp. So with the master volume, you control the amount of current, electrical currents, basically, what goes from preamp to the power amp. What that does, if your master is really low, the power and the power tubes don't get much currency because you, you have to remember there's no audio here it's just currency you know so the audio comes when it reaches the speaker and stuff so you know, basically what you're doing you're just dialing a amount of electrical power you know maybe just layman's terms not to get into too detailed the more you increase the master volume the more power the signal the power tubes gets. What it does, it makes the power tubes work, it adds a low end, and when you do it to a certain point, the power tubes start to distort, kind of like preamp tubes. So it adds more gain, which we call power amp gain. It adds pretty much everything. <laughs> the kind of the downside of it that it <laughs> The most audible thing, what it adds, is volume. <laughs> it's, it's insane amount of volume. And that's why nowadays many people, like me sometimes, when I had the cab here, I uh, had an attenuator after, and that isn't the volume either. That just re reduces the power from the power ramp before it reaches the cabinet. Now I don't have anything in between, between either cabinet in another isolated room kind of iso booth so i can play it as pretty much as loud as i want and i won't hear it here so i'm monitoring myself via the studio monitors so yeah and the cabinet is marshall 4x12 960 bx where i have a green box and a marshall vintage the original v30 and the new celestin chinese made v30 i'm now using a green back might with the two sm57 in sevens in the fredman style yeah, it's pretty loud. It's three and a half now, the master. And as you heard, the sound is really, really full and really nice. What happens is, I'm gonna now dial it back and start to increase it. I will need to edit 
this afterwards in the post so that the volume levels don't change because as you know we humans when everything is louder it sounds better there's low end but I, I will for this purpose I need to edit so that they are same so you can actually hear how the sound difference and you and I were not fooled by the volume by the actual sound what it does so like I said master volume it's not just the volume it's so much else okay so now, now it's zero, so there's no signal coming from the from the preamp section to the power amp section. When I start to increase that, now it's at one. There's volume. Now I need to pull, pull this up. But now when I play, let me just play some really easy, simple jaga. I need to raise the volume here. So this is the only vo real volume. What I'm now—it's it's my audio interface. This volume—that is—it's that's only volume. So now the volume to me is the same when just before when the master was in three and a half, and the sound is is quite weak. Okay, I need to put this back so I don't lose my my hearing when I'm trying starting to increase the master volume. Okay, now what, what we hear, I'm gonna again level match the, the volume so you're not fooled by the volume. What you hear is there's a little bit more low end, a little bit fuller sound, a little more everything. Then the reason many people ask me why I crank my amps, you know, well, I'm not really cranking them, it's, they're never, like, full, because then there's so much power tube distortion that it's just... But I found a sweet spot where I can feel that the power tubes are really working, they are adding a bit of distortion, and the low end just becomes big, but it's still, but it's still tight, and, you know, Balls. So let me do that. Find the sweet spot. Now it's a, it's a bit too much. Now the master is at six. Hey, let me play a little bit. The power tubes are really like I mean I, I can hear that here like really loud. Okay, let me dial it back a bit. There, now it's around three and a half. This is usually between three and five, depending what I want. I usually have the master volume on, on fifth one fifth. And now, now when we listen, and now I need to lower the volume so that it's on the same volume what you just hear, but so you're not fooled by a volume. But listen to the sound. What we hear, what I hear, what hopefully you hear. More bottom end, more gain, more top, more mids, more volume. <laughs> well, you, you didn't hear volume because I level matched this because I don't want you to be fooled by the volume. But all the other things. So, master volume. This is the reason why every single tube amp sounds like shit when playing at bedroom levels because the power tubes aren't doing anything you know these were designed this is 120 watt amp and these were designed to play at arenas stadiums venues or studios where you can crank these these are not designed to play at home for home playing bedroom playing i recommend something like this 
This is a Soldano SLO solid state amplifier. You know, there's no tubes, but the sound is actually pretty close. So these are for bedroom playing. Oh, if you're thinking about play, uh, buying a tube amp, but you don't have a studio or isolated booth or room where you can take fully advantage of it, I recommend get something that was designed to be played at, at home, because these aren't. Luckily, nowadays, there's really good attenuators, which I, when, when I have my cab here, if you've seen my previous videos, I use an attenuator, the Santrux React IR, which is a reactive load and cab attenuator. It's really good. It really doesn't change the sound. But it, what it does, because it's, it's uh, after the speaker out, and between the cabinet, it reduces the power, the voltage, so that the speakers don't get that much. And other thing that affects, yeah, the amp, but also the speakers. You heard when the sound was really low master volume, there was no bottom end and nothing. It's because the power tubes didn't work, but it's also because the speakers couldn't work. There was nothing for them to work on. The, the signal, the power, the electricity they got was so small that they, well, I can't see, but I, I think they didn't move at all. And obviously, when they don't move, there's no low end and stuff. The more you increase this, the more the power tubes start to distort at mojo, bottom end, the speaker gets louder signal. They start to really work like, yeah, and now we're talking. And then if you st stand in front of a, of a you know, crank amp, the speakers are really, I mean, I've blown up speakers. Like, you know, Greenbacks, one of my favorites, along with V30s. Greenbacks are only 25 watt. You know, by cranking this amp and playing for a while, I probably will, they will blow. But they sound really good when they're just there moving and you get also a little bit of that speaker breakup, distortion. That, that's part of the sound too. Hopefully you get the idea what, once more. Master volume. It's not really a volume. You're not controlling any volume per se. You're controlling how much power, how, how strong the signal is from pre-amplifier to power amplifier. The more powerful the signal is, the more the tubes really work, the more bottom end, the more gain, the more top end, the more everything they produce. The side effect <laughs> is the volume, which will be insane loud. You can tame that with an attenuator after the amplifier. While we're at it, let me show you, just came to my mind, Someone's gonna ask, what about Plexi? There's no master volume. Let me show you. So this loudness one, labeled as high treble, and loudness two labeled as normals. Normal. These are preamp gains, like the preamp volume on an 800, or the pre-gain level on a 50 So there's no master volume, so there's nothing in between to hold you know, the, the power in, in control. So the more gain you add, the louder the preamp becomes, the more signal the power tubes gets. The more bass you add, it adds also volume, and it adds bass, it adds, you know, volume to the bass frequencies. So when you have everything cranked, listen. Now, now there's a, there's a lot of gain and volume. So I like to have usually everything around where they are, eight, like three o'clock, meets around two o'clock, and then I'll just control the, the amount of gain, the preamp gain with this one. There's not much now. Now when I add, you know, you hear what happened. More lows, more gain, and it's not even cranked yet. More everything. But I can't control this amp. It's, like, it's really loud now. It's louder than the 5th from 50. 
because there's no master volume. So Plexi is definitely not your whole man. It's only, I mean, if you like this kind of sound. It's, that it sounds like shit. So. And with Plexi, you now you hear that the, the tone, it is why it is, because basically the preamp tubes are wide open. Hey, thanks for watching. Hopefully this one cleared out the myth about master volume and how to use it properly. If you found this interesting, thumbs up, subscribe, you know the drill. Until next time, take care, bye.